Even though this training DVD is about the HVR270 camcorder, we're going to take just a second to talk about the M35 tape deck. Why? Because in a broadcast or an ENG environment, this is the perfect companion for the 270, and it may be that you've got one of these that came along with your camcorder when you bought one. Now, when you bought into the HDV format, perhaps even a couple of years ago, it was a little challenging because Canon had their version of, of HDV when we were dealing with 24P or 30P, and JVC has their version of HDV because they're dealing with the 1280 by 720 image format and in a 24P or 30P or 60P signal all embedded onto tape. And so if you went with a JVC route, you had to have a JVC deck. And if you went with the Canon route, you could only use the Canon camcorder to play back your tapes and, and capture your content. And then, of course, if you went down the Sony road, you had to use a Sony deck or a Sony camcorder to capture that. So you had a whole bunch of different things. Well, the M35 brings it all together in one package. Now we can put in a JVC tape or a Canon tape or a Sony tape, any one of the three, in this deck and it'll play it back and digitize it over FireWire and allow us to capture that content straight into the computer or just simply play it, play it back. So sort of a one size fits all. So we're just going to take a quick look and a quick view at the M35 deck. Now currently in there I've got a JVC tape and it's a 30p tape. We'll press play. We can see our time code indicated in the top here and we can of course turn that off if we want to turn off the display and just see the tape itself. And again, we can see that it's showing that it's 30p right here. Now if we fast forward through this content, turn our display on so that we can see it fast forwarding there. Just keep fast forwarding and you'll see where the tape changes to 24p. Now we have a 24p indicator. So you see the tape deck is capable of reading whatever format on mixed format tapes. So we're not locked into one tape file format. So there we've got something that's in the JVC format. We'll drop in something here that was shot in the Canon format. So we'll press stop and eject. Now this also takes in the full sized HDV tapes. Let's put in another tape format. We'll play that as well. So no reboot involved at all. In other words, the, the clock automatically shifts over regardless of what format tape that we put into it. Now we can see that playing back the 60i material and it's indicated as 60i content. Then finally we'll stop that and eject our tape and throw in the large DV cam format tape. And one of the benefits of the large DV cam format tapes is that we can record up to four and a half hours when we're using a deck like the 270. So we've got plenty of record time available in here. So there's our, our tape, it's in. This will give us an indicator that it's 60i and it's saying that it's HDV. This has the exact same memory access that we saw in the 270. So we simply press the, men, the menu button here, and this takes us into the menu. We can see all the different menus that we have. We're just going to look at a couple of menus here. First of all, we've got the ability to automatically select between HDV and DV. I recommend leaving this in the auto mode. And cycling through some of the different menu options, we've got it set up for video out. Now the video outs can be set up to be 1080i, 480i, or we can simply output the 480i signal. This does have SDI on it, so we can output an HDSDI or an SDSDI off the back of the deck. So this really is well appointed to be working in almost any studio environment. Another great thing about this deck is when you put it into a pause mode, it grabs just one field of the image, so you get a rock solid still image when you're working with it. So if you're needing to send a still image out and you're using this as an inline on-air deck, that's a great way to be able to get a freeze frame and not have to worry about what's happening in that image. Let's look at some other things with it. So we're going to go ahead and just eject that tape and we'll take a quick look at a couple of the menu functions in here. So we'll open up the menu pressing the menu button. Now I've already gone through and changed the size of the 
the uh, type in the menu here, which is really handy to be able to see it large. So we can set up our display, audio setups, VTR setups, our time code and U-bit setups, and our others menu. Now, just like the 270, the M35 deck also has some assignable buttons. It's got three. So we can set these buttons up to do a variety of different things in the button modes. So as we come down in the others menu, just like we did with the 270, we'll get into the assigned button mode. And currently, assignable button number one is assigned to the index marker. And this is our assignable button number one right here. It's found underneath the input select button next to the headphone control. Then we can come down here to assignable button number two. And assignable button number two is found right here next to the menu controls. And we can set that up for, for whatever we'd like it to be. Currently it's set up as an audio dub, but we'll go ahead and select that button. We get an idea of some of the things that we can control. So for instance, we might want to change our input or our output. This allows us to change to an HDV down convert. Might be that we want to turn on or off our SDI input output system. We might want to change our playback zoom. Now, just like with the 270, we can actually zoom in on the image when we're playing back. So we can use the menu functions to zoom in on our image to get a, a real good idea of what's happening with the detail in our shot. Sliding down, we can go to an end search, view data code, go into an all scan mode, which allows us to see all of our overscan areas. In other words, we can see everything in the frame rather than just what's inside that safe area. We can also turn on or turn off color bars. We can go to a search select so that we can find something either remotely or locally. Our search forward, search backward, and the size of our counter. We can change our countdown color, fast forward and rewind speeds, and these are all things that can be assigned an individual button so it's very easy to set this up to work exactly the way that you want it to work in your facility. Now some other things that we have on here is we have key inhibit lock switches so if you're using this as a remote control only deck you're controlling it from a switching system or from an NLE system it prevents any of the keypad on the front from being used. It's got audio input for all four channels off to the side here and all you're going to do is plug your, your four inputs into the back of the unit and these are going to be line inputs, and this allows us to control the volume of each incoming signal. Now bear in mind, it still is an HDV signal coming in, or rather an HDV signal that records down to tape, so it is an MPEG-1 layer 2 audio file at 384 kilobits per second. It doesn't change to a PCM or other higher quality audio format when we're dealing with the deck versus the camera because it all does go down to the tape. The back of the M35 is loaded with I.O. In other words, it's very easy to pipe things in and to pipe things back out. In this lower corner here, we have four unbalanced audio inputs. And off to the side, we have four balanced audio outputs. Coming straight up, there's an S-video input, an S-video output. And below that, we've got a composite video input and a composite video output. Straight up from there are component switches so that we're able to come out of the M35 using component connections. Next to that is a timecode I.O. as well as an AES EBU in out system. Coming straight up from there, there's a composite video out and there's also an unbalanced audio out in mono for your mono monitor that you might have there in your control room. Coming straight over from there, we've got an HDSDI output on the deck as well so we can go SDSDI or HDSDI on the pipe. Below that, we have a LANC control on the system. Coming up from the AES EBU in and out, we've got a composite video and a mono audio for your control room monitor for a mono monitor that you might need to feed in the system. Below that, we've got a LANC control as well as a control B uh, plug-in on the back of the deck. And finally, it's got an iLink or a 1394 or FireWire output, depending on what you'd like to call it. Sony, of course, calls it iLink. And then finally, and last but not least, a master power switch on the back of the deck. So you've got a master power switch on the back and then a standby switch on the front of the deck. That wraps up our quick overview of the M35 deck. Now, whether you've got a Canon camcorder or a JVC camcorder or only Sony camcorders, this is a great way or a great place that you can build your studio around a single common deck, finally. It's great that we've got just this, this one piece. So now you know where some of the different buttons and switches are and you know how to get through the basic menus. You know what the I.O. looks like. 
with that, that wraps up the M35 